I'm J.R. Church. Welcome to today's analysis of the news. Again, we've got Ken Klein with us, the producer of these three DVDs on the mysteries of the Great Pyramid. It's called the Great Pyramid Trilogy. The first one is in the, the Lost Legend of Enoch. The second one, Message from the Stars to the Third One, Gateway to the Galaxy. Or you can get all three of them from us for a trilogy. It's called the Great Pyramid Trilogy. I want to talk to you, uh, Ken, uh, about the empty coffer and why it was empty. Gary Stream is here also, and we're, we're going to have a good time today. Okay, great. Yeah, well, the, the coffer was empty in the king's chamber because it represented the fact that Enoch never died. He was taken, and he was not. That's what the Bible tells us. So the, the pyramid was built specifically to maintain the record of an event that had never happened before in human history, and that is that a human being escaped death, and uh, it impacted the Egyptian culture in such a way that they never got over it. They, they were so fixated on the afterlife uh, that uh, they uh, continue to maintain the, the memory of it by continuing to make pyramids, and that's why there's over 100 pyramids in Egypt today because it was a sacrament to them to make pyramids. It was a monument unto this event, and that coffer in there was empty because it represented Enoch never dying. Well, you know, we've heard a lot of stories about why the thing was empty. Yeah. But this, is, this makes more sense than anything I've ever heard. It really does. And in fact, the DVDs that we'd like to share with you uh, really document the fact that the coffer is not empty by accident. There's a purpose there. And Ken, I just want to reread a phrase here for discussion. Isaiah 19, 19, in that day shall there uh, be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord, and this is the interesting part, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. Now, what better witness could there be than an empty coffer? Absolutely. And the, and the hope of uh, a life that doesn't have to uh, be uh, ended in a grave. I mean, a yeah. promise of an eternal life, it's a sign of that. And it's it a witness of that. And it's, it's a great uh, inspiration uh, that the, the Great Pyramid provides for us. If we can de-encrypt all of the facts and put them all together, it's like a big puzzle that we've put together to help people see the true meaning mm -hmm. and the revelation of this thing. And it, it's, it's been a great blessing to be involved in the, in the mm -hmm. construction and production of this work. Now in the second disc, you go to the engineering of the Great Pyramid and you actually back engineer it with computer graphics. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, I think uh, in the screen right now that we show, uh, uh, you know, what, what happened and how they dropped the coffer into place. It wasn't brought through the passageways. It was too big. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of uh, violated, in a sense, the whole funerary uh, progression and ceremony for how they buried people. They would put them in a sarcophagus, take them down, put them in the ground. But this... Uh, sarco this sarcophagus or funerary box coffer as we call it had to be dropped into place because it was too big for the passageways and when Mal Al Mamun broke through uh, uh, later in the in 700 or so AD he found no mummy in there so it, it wasn't a it wasn't a tomb yeah. it was it was a monument to memorialize this event of a person never dying yeah and the early Christian writers actually said that Enoch's translation because he walked with God and who was not for God took him. His translation was a rapture that was a prophecy of our rapture that we look forward to. That's fascinating, don't you think, well, Gary? Well, J.R., it, uh, it brings the whole thing together. Uh, it takes the, the Great Pyramid out of the realm of, of some kind of superstitious mysticism and it gives it some sense as Isaiah prophesied. It makes it a witness. I just love this idea. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. It's, uh, it's so, so great to see it as an oracle, as a prophecy in stone, yeah. as, it's, as it's spoken of in, in Isaiah. And uh, it all comes together in this series that took three years to produce. And yeah. uh, we're real proud of it. Well, you know, I've heard all my life that the Egyptians built the Great Pyramids. Well, this great pyramid had salt encrusted on the walls and the floors inside. That was sea, ocean salt. It had to be before the flood. Be oh, absolutely before the flood. In fact, the Khafre pyramid, uh, there's, there's a giant, uh, it almost looks like a, a somebody cut with a knife into the mud around the Khafre pyramid, 30-foot 30, 30 walls. And if you look into those walls, you can see seashells. So that, that mud was brought by the ocean and uh, it was, it, so that means that the pyramid had to have been built 
before the, the great flood. It was pre-Diluvian for sure. Wow. Well, I hope you'll get this from us. There's three DVDs called The Great Pyramid Trilogy, uh, The Lost Legend of Enoch, uh, The Message from the Stars, and Gateway to the Galaxy. The three of them are available uh, from our ministry for $49.95. It's a $75 value. All three of them for $49.95. You can get them by calling 1-800-475-1111. I hope you'll get them from us today. Let us send them out to you. And then you can study them and uh, understand the complexity of this tremendous monument that could only have been built with the help of angels. I'm J.R. Church. Thank you for coming to be with us. Gary, it's been good. Mm -hmm. Until next time, keep looking up. We'll see you again tomorrow with our analysis of the news.